If you've been working in NLP for a while, you've almost certainly heard people talking about BERT. Today we're going to talk about what this model is, how it works, and some of its benefits and drawbacks in NLP for developers. So BERT is a specific large transformer masked language model, and I'm going to talk about what all of those words mean. First off, a language model. Traditionally, language models are statistical models of the probability of words or phrases. So a language model could tell you that the probability of the phrase Raza is open source is greater than the probability of the phrase source is Raza open, given some training corpus. A masked language model is a little bit different. So instead of the probability for the whole phrase, you train your model by having it fill in the blank would be the word that you are looking for here. And this particular way of training language models is one of the big contributions of the BERT paper, and you will often hear of BERT and related models referred to as masked language models. Masked language models are useful because they're one way of doing contextual word embeddings. So if you watch the word embedding video, you know that I mentioned that one of the drawbacks of traditional word embeddings is the word bark in the dog's bark and the tree's bark would be given the same representation. Contextual word embeddings allow you to have different representations for different senses. Transformers, if you've watched the video in the series on transformers, you're already familiar with them. They're just a new family of neural network architecture similar to recurrent neural networks or convolutional neural network. And it is important to know that BERT is very large. So compared to earlier models for training contextual word embeddings like ELMO, BERT is around three to four times larger. Let's talk a little bit about the details of the BERT architecture. The original transformer architecture uses a traditional sequence to sequence model where you have an encoder that takes your input and turns it into embeddings and a decoder that takes those embeddings and turns them into a string output. BERT's a little bit different. It takes multiple encoders and stacks them on top of each other. One way of using the model is to take then the embeddings from those multiple encoders, often the last layer of the last network, and use those as input into a new classifier that you've trained. Those embeddings will look a little something like this. You'll notice that there's a couple of unique tokens in here. So CLS in the front is used as a token to represent the classification of a specific input. You can use this for supervised learning because you know what the classification could be, for example, one for positive sentiment or zero for negative sentiment, and use that to update your model. The SEP tokens are used at the end of every input sequence to BERT. So if you only had one, to one token string, you would use SEP at the end. Here we have two and we have the token between the token strings and also at the end. A slightly more common way to use BERT is to use your additional classifier to fine tune the original model. So you will actually update the weights in the original BERT model that you are using, not just use that final embedding layer. Since the paper was published, there has been a lot of work on BERT. The architecture itself has been extended, usually to make it smaller and more compact and cheaper to run, and also work on a large number of different languages, so Camembert for French, Arabert for Arabic, and Embert, which is a massively multilingual model with 104 different languages. How is BERT used? I talked about the two main ways that it was used previously. Either you take the final layer of the sentence that you are looking at and use that as input to a new model, or you do fine tuning, training a new model that updates the weights of the original BERT model that you're using. And there are some real benefits to using BERT. The biggest one is because it's pre-trained, you can use it as input to a smaller model without having to recompute the very large and expensive to run BERT model. In addition, with successful fine tuning, you can have very good accuracy with BERT models. Many state-of-the-art systems right now incorporate BERT in some capacity. And finally, pre-trained BERT models are available in a large number of languages, over 100 at this point. There are some drawbacks, however. Because it's big and there's a lot of weights to update, it's also slow to train. And that means you need to spend a lot of compute to do so, so it is expensive. Finally, it's not a, really a finished model in itself. It's designed to be the input into other systems, so you're going to need to build the rest of the system if you want to use BERT. There are also a lot of mistakes you can make while using BERT. Probably the most common is not using the word piece tokenizer. You need to use exactly the same tokenizer for your work that was used to train the original model. 
In addition, it's not entirely clear why, but while fine-tuning, some runs of the model will be degenerate, they won't converge. Uh, and this seems to be dependent on the task and the random seed used to initialize the model. It's hard to predict when that'll happen, so it's good to be very aggressive with early stopping if you're doing fine-tuning yourself. Finally, you probably shouldn't train a BERT model from scratch. It costs many thousands of dollars to do the first time, and you should just use the pre-trained models. It'll make your life so much easier. If you're interested in learning more about BERT, there's a blog post on the Raza blog about all of the techniques that you can use to take the BERT model and make it smaller, more compact, and less expensive to run. Uh, if you're interested in using BERT in your Raza pipeline, probably the easiest way is going to be using a pre-trained model from the Hugging Face Transformers library using the HS Transformers NLP component. And I've put a link to that in the blog post in the video description below. Thanks for joining me today on NLP for Developers. I hope you found this helpful and it gave you a good understanding of what BERT is, the ways that it's used, and some of its benefits and drawbacks. I will see you next time, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them on the Raza forums.